Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of 60 Formula. Hope you're doing well today. On today's episode, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. This one episode that I'm doing today is not gonna be about Siberian Huskies. I am going to be sharing a personal collection of mine with you. Now, I'm no stranger to collecting things. I've been collecting things all my life. In fact, if you don't know how this channel started, it was actually collecting retro video games. I have a vast collection of a lot of things, including skateboards, retro video games, and today I'm going to be showcasing to you my Beanie Baby collection. Now, I know your thoughts are probably like, dude, why does this grown man have a whole bunch of Beanie Babies? First of all, I grew up in the 90s when Beanie Baby were a humongous craze and I collected these things when I was a little kid. Now these aren't part of my collection from when I was a little kid, but getting older as you grow up you start to miss all of the things you had as a kid. I'm definitely one of those people. And in today's market people are literally throwing Beanie Babies out the window. They used to be worth tons of money and today the truth is that they're worth pennies. These things were made to be collected so naturally they became worthless over time. All of them except that is for the original set of Beanie Babies, the ones created before the hype ever happened. And if you're too young to remember what Beanie Babies are, they're basically the precursor to Beanie Boos, the really popular stuffed animal that you know today. So a long time ago, I got my hands on a very old Beanie Baby, one from the original set of Beanie Babies before they ever got popular. And typically when I get something and I really enjoy it and I have a nostalgic tie to it, I am a completionist. I will go after an entire set of things. So a while back, I decided I was going to collect a full set of the second generation swing tag Beanie Babies. Now these are Beanie Babies that are very old. We're talking 24 year old plush toys. These particular Beanie Babies that I'm gonna show you today were only made between May of 1994 and February of 1995. Now keep in mind, as I tell you a lot of the facts in this video, most of it is speculation since Ty Warner has never released official production numbers or dates on when these toys were released. But tons of research from both the community and professionals when it comes to studying these little critters, we've been basically able to figure out a timeline of when and almost how many of these things were created especially when it comes to the earlier generations. So the Beanie Babies I'm about to show you in today's video are a complete set of second generation swing tag Beanie Babies. I do have a few variations to show you when it comes to Beanie Babies, a couple oddities, and things we'll go over as we look through the collection. I'm gonna explain to you how I got each and every one of these. I'm not going to discuss price when it comes to these Beanie Babies. Just know that if you're wondering which type of Beanie Babies are actually valuable and are worth money, any Beanie Baby you see in this video will fetch you $100 or more. There are a lot of rumors online about Beanie Babies, basically stemming from eBay, but they come from tons of different places. Today, I plan on debunking a ton of these rumors and talking about which Beanie Babies are actually rare and actually valuable and which ones aren't. So if you have Beanie Babies at home, like a whole bunch of them, and you're trying to figure out, hey, which ones are valuable. If you see a Beanie Baby in this video with this exact tag in front of me, you should start doing your research because it's probably worth your time to collect it or sell it if you wanna profit off of it. Okay, so real quick before we start this video, what I wanna say is the tags you're looking at today are a small heart tag, that's what we're focusing on, and it is a folded book style tag, which means I can open it up and there's some information inside. This is important because the first generation Beanie Babies, which were only produced for a very short period of time, about six months, they don't have a folding book style tag. It's flat. Now, almost in nearly every situation, if your Beanie Baby does not have a swing tag anymore, it's basically not valuable. 
There are lots of exceptions there, but for the most part, if your Beanie Baby is missing this heart tag, it's not worth much. Collectors look at the condition of the heart tag almost exclusively and barely pay attention to the condition of the beanie. The condition of the beanie is always a secondary thought. The second thing I want to talk about is you'll notice this first Beanie Baby we're about to go over, which is Allie the Alligator, is inside of an acrylic case, and I can't take it out of here. The reason is because this Beanie Baby has been authenticated and graded by a service, the company named True Blue Beans. Now, I think this service is absolutely fantastic because if you have any doubt in your mind, if you can't tell, and there's a lot of things you have to know, if you cannot tell if your Beanie Baby is real or not, sending it in to get it authenticated is a great route. Now you'll notice that it's in this acrylic case here, and here at the bottom, it has this Becky's True Blue Beans sticker, which is a void proof sticker, so you cannot take this Beanie Baby out of here. Now while I do praise the service for authenticating Beanie Babies, I will say I have a gripe about the grading process that goes along with doing this. You'll notice on the front of this, it has this little authentication label that tells you all about the Beanie Baby. It tells you the generation of the swing tag. It tells you the generation of the tush tag, which is another tag on the Beanie Baby. And then it gives you this description down here at the bottom, which here says absolutely magnificent Beanie. Here's where I have a problem. This service which authenticates Beanie Babies, they will authenticate your Beanie Baby for a flat rate of $5. You can send your Beanie Baby in, they'll send it back to you in a bag, and it will tell you whether or not if it is authenticated. They also have a service, which is the one you're looking at here, where they authenticate and grade it and put it in this acrylic case. A lot of the collectors in the community and tons of sellers on eBay highly raise the price of the Beanie Baby based on the grade. This is where I have the biggest problem here. I have had a ton, dozens, of Becky's True Blue Bean graded Beanie Babies. The grades are almost always arbitrary, and I will say that they do a good job of telling you if the Beanie Baby is worn or if the tag is damaged. They do a good job at that. But when it comes to describing exactly the grade of the Beanie Baby, it is really not a great process. So you'll see here this is absolutely magnificent Beanie. Basically, that means in their terms, which you wouldn't know this unless you owned a lot of these or did research, this is a Beanie Baby that is generally clean, free of any damage, but it's not a museum quality Beanie Baby. Basically, it's in the middle of the road. The problem here is they interchange their adjectives. I've had these cases say absolutely beautiful beanie, absolutely gorgeous beanie, and then there's absolutely magnificent beanie. There's really no scale or basis to know which adjective is better than the other. What is a, is a magnificent beanie in better condition than a gorgeous beanie? Or is an absolutely gorgeous beanie better than a beautiful beanie? There's no clear cut answer here. Also, I will say, I've opened tons of these authenticated graded Beanie Babies. I'll show you right now an entire room full of broken cases where I've cracked into these things and investigated them myself, obviously very carefully and with gloves on. And a lot of the Beanie Babies that are graded museum quality, mint with mint tag, they're not by even my standards museum quality Beanie Babies. I've opened an old face violet Teddy that was museum quality and it had no beans in its legs and a popped stitch, which means at some point those beans left that bear's legs. Hardly museum quality. However, because it was deemed so, sellers will ask astronomically higher prices because it has that museum quality label on it. Now, I know that this is kind of a problem in a lot of collecting communities like retro gaming. They have their own grading system and so do comic books. The Beanie Baby grading system is flawed. I'm not docking Becky and Karen. They provide a great service. I'm simply saying that it needs to be readjusted. The grading scale, if you're going to get into actually grading these by condition of the beanie and by condition of the tag, and they're gonna have hundreds of people investing money into this service, and the grades actually do affect 
the value, you need to be more specific, and you maybe need to think about grading these Beanie Babies on a scale from one to 10, or one to 100, or something like that, because these adjectives that are describing the beanies, they don't work, and the museum quality beanies, you need to describe why they're museum quality. What about them makes them museum quality? And if they are museum quality, they need to be kept in a better case. These containers, let me just show you here. This beanie, it can, it can rock around in this case. There's a lot of space. And that's not gonna hurt the Beanie Baby that much. It's a plush toy, but the tag attached to it inside, it's hanging on by a very thin piece of plastic. And the paper attached to that plastic is extremely brittle. So even shaking around like this, it will damage the hole on the tag. I definitely suggest that if you wanna have your Beanie Babies authenticated, take them to True Blue Beans. They are the number one authenticating service in the community, but do not take the grading to heart. If someone offers you a Beanie Baby and they say, it's museum quality, if it's got that written on there, it doesn't matter to me. And it shouldn't matter to you very much until the grading process becomes more polished, in my opinion, it really doesn't matter what the grade says on these labels. As long as the professionals have deemed them authentic, I'm good to go. And that's why today you're going to see a lot of these Beanie Babies out of the cases. I honestly can't stand the way some of these Beanie Babies get stuck inside of them. And so I take them out. They're for me to enjoy. However, I am safe about how I handle them. And you're going to see how I am today. So with all of that said, I think I've covered everything here. We're going to start showing off all the Beanie Babies. All right, so first up is Allie. Allie is one of the coolest Beanie Babies when it comes to this set, and that's because he's got a unique color. A lot of the Beanie Babies in the second generation and first generation, they share the same fabric. So you're gonna see repeating colors amongst a lot of these Beanie Babies in the second generation. Allie, however, is a very rare case where you have this really pretty, like, forest green color. Now this pattern on the top of Ally, which is like a scaly pattern, is repeated throughout a couple Beanie Babies we're gonna see today, but the forest green fabric that's on him is exclusive to him, which is really, really cool. Nothing else really special to say about this acquisition. I got it with a couple other beanies from a lady who was selling off her collection. She knew what she had, she was getting them authenticated, and she sold them for a pretty decent price. Ali was a first-gen Beanie Baby, and he continued on into the later generations. Now the next one is Blackie. And Blackie is one of the first bears to be made that isn't like a sit-up bear like the Princess Diana. He actually looks like an animalistic bear. And I also have him out of the case here. Now, I got this one first and it was actually authenticated, but I was looking at the tag through the authenticated case and look at this tag. Like, look at how fake this tag looks. Now it's been authenticated to be real. So my only assumption is that this tag was so sun faded that someone just tried to take a marker and recreate the darker red that it used to be. That's the only thing I can imagine because when you look inside, it looks, it's pretty authentic, but also, it has the ink bleeding through, so I'm just very conflicted about how this made it through the TBB grading process, and it didn't even have a mention of this tag being damaged or anything. I was not happy with that, and I went ahead and I got another authenticated Blackie. Blackie's not that hard to find. He's pretty easy, but Pay attention to the tags, especially when they're authenticated. You never know. So when it comes to Blackie, this style was copied a lot. There's a few Beanie Babies in the second generation that look exactly like Blackie, and we're gonna see them here in just a minute. But he is a really cool Beanie Baby, your standard black bear. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the authenticated one really quickly. Yeah, really fun, love this guy. All right, next up is Bones. 
And Bones is a very, very iconic and popular Beanie Baby. He kind of reminds me of the Pound Puppies from the 90s, if you guys remember those toys. I never had a Pound Puppy, but he looks almost exactly like a Pound Puppy. This Beanie Baby lasted until like the fifth or sixth generation, so it was a very popular Beanie Baby that people bought for a long time. Not a lot to say about this guy. They moved him over from the first generation. This is a second generation version. One of the reasons I really love the second generation Beanie Babies is because they're super simplistic. I love how old fashioned they look and it just harkens back to the 90s when things were easier and more simple. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next Beanie Baby we're gonna be going over is Chili. This is Chili and he looks exactly like Blackie, doesn't he? Remember I told you that they use this, this like uh, style over and over. Let's go ahead and just take Blackie and they kind of look exactly alike. You see what I'm saying? They did this over and over, just in different color schemes, different fabrics. Blackie lasted a while. Chili did not. So Chili, from even the earlier years, was a very rare Beanie Baby to get. This Beanie Baby on the back has a Canadian tush. You'll see that it has this little one like every other Beanie Baby, and then it has this big tush. Actually, I'll bring it up so you guys can see it. And this is basically a Canadian tush that tells you this stuffed animal was sold or meant to be sold in Canada. I see a lot of chilies uh, that have a Canadian tush, which tells me that they intended for the Canadian market to get a lot of these little polar bears. This is one of the, uh, not the first, but one of the earlier ones to be retired. And if you don't know what that means, that meant they stopped production on the beanie and then people went absolutely crazy and they sold for thousands on the secondary market. Chili was one of those very, very early on. Okay, the next one is a fun one. Everyone, almost everyone's owned this guy at one point in time. This is perhaps the Beanie Baby with the cutest name of them all, is Chocolate the Moose. I wish I could take him out and hang out with him and chill. We could have a cup of uh, chocolate cocoa, but unfortunately he is in here. And when it's authenticated and the case is really nice, oftentimes I don't care, but if the case is really nice, the beanie's in really good condition. I do keep them in the authenticated case. This is chocolate right here. In case you don't know anything about chocolate, he's one of the original nine Beanie Babies. And that means a couple things, and we'll go over that in today's video. But what you need to know for right now is that he was one of the first nine Beanie Babies ever created. And he was produced for a very long time, probably up until about 98. So it's a reason why a lot of people have him. He's only valuable if he has the first, second, or sometimes the third generation hang tag. I got this Beanie Baby from the same lady who sold me the alligator. Whoever owned these kept them in pristine condition, probably in a closet for the last 24 years. Not much more to say about chocolate. He's really cool. Next Beanie we have up is Cubby. And if you can tell, yes, this is exactly the same thing as Chili. Now, Cubby was originally named Brownie in the first generation, but they switched it over before the second generation and they renamed him Cubby. I have a authenticated version of Cubby and I also have just a chillin' version of Cubby. Cubby was actually one of the very first Beanie Babies I owned as a kid. I always thought that you could only get him at a Chicago Cubs game. So when I was a kid, I was always like, I've got one of the rare ones you could only ever get at a at a rare Chicago Cubs game. That's not the case. They just gave these out as a promotion at a Chicago Cubs game. You could buy these literally anywhere back in the day. Cubby is really pretty. He's almost this golden color. And these two Cubbies are almost kind of a different color. And you'll see that sometimes. With Beanie Babies, they will have almost different type of fabric depending on where they were made, what factory they were produced in. That's why it's also hard for me to say for sure, like, hey, if this looks a little bit different, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a counterfeit. You really need to do your homework and study the Beanie Baby. So it's also good to note that Cubby is one of the original nine along with chocolate. All right, let's move on to the next Beanie Baby. All right, this next Beanie Baby is Daisy 
the cow. <laughs> just the most boring Beanie Baby, and if you like this Beanie Baby, I apologize for saying that it's boring. But it is basically just a little cute cow, nothing specific or special to say about Daisy. What's really interesting though to me is if you pay attention, Daisy almost has exactly the opposite fabric pattern as Spot. When we get to Spot the dog, you're going to notice that he has a white body and a black spot that is donned almost exactly in that shape. So I wonder if they just reversed Daisy's body when they were creating Spot the dog. And when we get to it, I'll show you. I'll compare the two and we'll look at them. But this is Daisy, Daisy the Kizow. <laughs> Nothing really special to say about her. Just a cute little cow. Now this next Beanie Baby is probably my favorite in the entire set. This is Digger, and Digger is just my favorite color when it comes to these little stupid plush toys. They made this crab in a very pretty bright orange, and they later changed it to a red, so you're probably used to seeing this guy in red, and then they eventually changed the style to a gray tie-dye, and they named him Claude. So this crab has gone through a lot of changes, but he was originally orange. As you can see, it's a really pretty orange. And I love when Ty made like their animals a really crazy random color. And he did that with a couple of them. He went out on a limb and was like, you know, instead of making the color of the animal what it would be in nature, like, you know, like a black bear or a brown bear in the case of Cubby and Blackie, let's just make a crazy color for this animal. And we're going to see that today. And Digger is one of those instances. I love this Beanie Baby. He He's just so flippin' cool. And this is one of the first ones I actually got when I started my collection. Yeah, what a cutie pie. All right, the next beanie we're looking at is gonna be another original nine beanie. This right here is Flash. Flash's counterpart was Splash. And we'll look at Splash in just a little bit. It's a black and white version of the exact same model of this Beanie Baby. I love any Beanie Baby that's like aquatic life. I don't know why, I just, they're my favorite. The next one up is going to be Goldie. And Goldie is another one of these Beanie Babies that is just gorgeous to look at. He's like Digger with his very vibrant orange color. And what's really weird about this Beanie Baby is he's flipping huge. This Beanie Baby, even though he's a little goldfish, is bigger than most of the Beanie Babies. I got this one from the same woman who was selling the chocolate and the alley. So this just came from a set, as I said, of Beanie Babies that were really well taken care of. The next Beanie Baby I'm gonna show you has a little bit of history we're gonna go over. It is Happy the Hippo. Now, Happy the Hippo started out gray, but later on in the third generation, they switched him over to lavender, more of a purple color, which in my opinion is a way better color than gray, although I do understand they were going for more of a realistic look here with the animals. So most of you will probably have a happy that is purple or lavender. If you do have a happy that is gray, even if it has a third generation hang tag, it is worth some money. So go ahead and check. See if you have happy the hippo. If he's gray, you might have some dough on your hands. The next Beanie Baby I'm going to show you, I actually have two of, but I only have one here with me today, and this is Humphrey the Camel. Now, Humphrey is a very interesting Beanie Baby. Humphrey was the first officially retired Beanie Baby of all the Beanie Babies. And he's arguably really cool and complex. He's got four dangly legs, this little tail that has a knot. His head is this really weird shape. He's kind of an awkward Beanie Baby, but it's why he's kind of one of my favorites. Besides Digger, Humphrey is probably my favorite Beanie Baby in the set. He's really cool. And when I was a kid, I remember seeing Humphrey all the time and being like, man, if only I could 
own one of those. Back in the day, owning a Humphrey was really hard to do, and he was valued as being one of the most expensive Beanie Babies on the market. In the mid-90s, this guy was like in the thousands of dollars. He's nowhere near valued that today, but it's estimated that about 2,500 Humphreys were ever produced. Whether there's any truth to that production number, I have no idea, but there are some facts online that do state that that's how many were made. Humphrey can be found in the first three tag generations, so you can find him in first, second, and third, and in the third generation, they quickly retired him. You can find the beanie buddy of this beanie baby, the much bigger version that's large, and many people confuse that as the official Humphrey. Okay, these next two Beanie Babies we're going to go over are basically like variants of each other. This first one here is Inky, and you might be familiar with this one, but he may be more familiar to you in a pink color, because that's what they changed him to later on. Here in the second generation, however, he is a tan color, at least that's the color it is considered in the community. This is actually the second version of Inky that was released. The first version of Inky, which I have right here in this case, is a version of Inky without a mouth. Now I know you're like, uh, why does that matter? Mm, kind of my question exactly. When Inky was first created, they made him without a mouth. This is something you're going to see a lot of. Beanie Babies that were made a certain way and they quickly were changed because Ty, the owner of the company, decided he did not like the Beanie Baby looking that way. So this is the original version of Inky and he does have a second gen swing tag as you can see down there. In the second generation production line, they gave him a mouth, this little smile. So there are officially two different Inkies in the second generation set, but after the second generation, he was only made with the mouth exclusively, and then they later changed him to a pink color, which again, I prefer over this like taupe tan color. I don't know what you want to consider it. It's not really that appealing, kind of looks actually like an octopus or something slimy that you'd find in the ocean. So I do prefer the pink Inky. Also, it's notable to say that this is the only Beanie Baby with googly eyes. I have no idea why they decided to put googly cartoon eyes on this Beanie Baby when all of the rest of them have little button eyes, but I, I'm, not a, I'm not really a huge fan of it. However, I do like Inky. I think he's cute, but the, the cartoon eye thing, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Next up, and this is one of my favorite Beanie Babies, is Legs. Now, Legs is one of the original nine as well, one of the first Beanie Babies ever created, and Legs just has this really awesome color to him. The color of the fabric and his crazy, realistic looking eyes are just so appealing to me when it comes to this Beanie Baby. Now this is the last Beanie Baby that I got from the woman who was selling Alley, Goldie, and Chocolate. Sometimes you see a lot of stains on legs because he's a really popular Beanie Baby who lasted well into 1998. There's not much more to say about legs. He's just got a really pretty lime color and it really pops when I'm looking at the collection. Now this next Beanie Baby I absolutely hate to touch. I'm gonna show it to you guys, but I do not like touching him. This is Lucky. Now there are many versions of Lucky throughout the timeline of Beanie Babies. This is the earliest one. I'll tell you the differences right now. The first version of Lucky, which is this one, has seven felt spots glued on to the Beanie Baby. So these spots are literally glued on, which means if they come off, they ain't going back on unless you glue them back on yourself. It makes me really nervous to handle this Beanie Baby because these spots are so delicate. So if you find this Beanie Baby with all seven of its felt spots intact, it's a great Find. The second version of Lucky has like 11 spots that are printed onto the fabric. And then at some point in time, I think in the fourth or fifth gen, they accidentally made a fabric 
that had a ton of spots. I think there was up to 21. So this version is very hard to find. Now Lucky does have this really beautiful bright red color that is kind of hard to find on the earlier Beanie Babies, but I believe it was kind of this theme they were going with when it came to the insect Beanie Babies. And we'll get to that in a bit when we see more insect themed Beanie Babies. Moving on to the next one. The next Beanie Baby is going to be Mystic. Now this is a strange Beanie Baby, especially those eyeballs. They literally, they freak me out. So Mystic is one of the only Beanie Babies that is not like a real animal, which is really cool, but there's about 30,000 versions of Mystic out there that are spread across several different generations. There's Mystic with a fine mane and Mystic with a coarse mane and Mystic with a, a iridescent horn and just, it, it never ends. All you need to know is when it comes to the first generation, it's a white beanie baby with a yarn mane and it has a brown horn. And then it's like a tan horn is what they call it. Now the reason Mystic is really hard to find, especially when it comes to the older generations, is because it's a white beanie baby. Any beanie baby that was pure white, and there's no shortage of them in the second generation, are really hard to find because it's really hard to maintain their color throughout the years. A lot of these things were kept in homes with pets or people who smoked and they became yellow really quickly. So to find a really white Beanie Baby, one that has its original color to it, is very difficult. Mystic is definitely one of those harder ones to find when it comes to the second generation set. Now the next one is Nip. I love Nip. Nip the cat is also across several different generations, but this Nip has an old face style is what they call it. He has magenta whiskers and also a white belly, which is not common. The other nips typically have a different style face and also white paws and sometimes no white belly. Nip was one of three new Beanie Babies introduced in the second generation. All the other Beanie Babies you're seeing here were first generation Beanie Babies. None of them were brand new except for Zip, Nip, and Valentino. So Nip was a brand new Beanie Baby to the second generation swing tag set. He's really cute and a lot of people pay a lot of money to get this version of him. Now the next one I'm gonna go over is Patty the Platypus, one of the original nine Beanie Babies. And this guy comes in a million different colors, but luckily for the second gen, there's only one color and it's raspberry. Now I've got two different patties here. You'll see this one is your standard patty. He is made in China and he's intended for the US market. This patty right here on the other hand, if we open up his tag, it looks a little bit different than the standard US tag. And I can show you the difference here. Here is what the UK tag looks like. And here is what the American tag looks like. So you can see the difference here. One thing that was constantly told to me when I was collecting, especially in the community, and it is not true, is that the UK versions of these Beanie Babies, the UK swing tags, are much rarer than the made in China US tags. I've done a lot of research on this, and to corroborate my evidence, to basically back up what I'm saying here, Bic Dip on a Bus, he's a YouTuber, he's put together an entire timeline of when these Beanie Babies were released. And when you look at the early second generation Beanie Babies, I'll show you right here, this is a screenshot of the timeline he created. So when it comes to the second generation Beanie Babies, tags started being pumped out into the UK and Germany before they ever came to the United States. So before they were ever making any second gen hang tags that were intended for the United States, for months, they were making Germany and UK second gen swing tag Beanie Babies. Now, as I said before, the information I'm giving you here is just speculated, but it's very likely that it's true because in my time collecting, I have stumbled across more UK versions of second gen Beanies than any other region. And so many times sellers will come up to me and say, dude, these UK Beanies are something very special. 
but really when it comes to the second generation, are they? I think it's likely that the UK versions of the second gen Beanie Babies were made for a much longer period of time than the US versions. So if someone ever comes to you and says, hey, the UK version of this second gen Beanie Baby is harder to find, that's not always necessarily the case. So if you take a look at this patty, it also has a Canadian tush, which means this beanie was not only intended for UK, it was also intended for Canada. So what the heck does that mean? It's something I cannot find any collector or professional in the hobby to even understand or know. My assumption is that this Beanie Baby was intended for the Canadian market or intended for the UK market and they slapped one of these tags on there after the fact because they didn't have enough inventory. Patty is one of my very favorite Beanie Babies because I love that they chose to go with a deep purple raspberry for the color which was very bold instead of going with what traditionally a platypus is colored, which is, I don't know what, brown or something like that. Patty has always been an iconic Beanie Baby because of the color and because of how cute that little beak is. The next one we're gonna be talking about is Peeking the Panda. Now this is a very, very adorable Beanie Baby. Everyone loves Peeking and Peeking is very, very hard to find. The reason is because Peeking is one of the ones that was retired very early on. And when a lot of people think of Peeking, they think of Chili because these two Beanie Babies were retired together. Now Peking does have a little bit more of a bulbous head and his eyeballs actually have a piece of felt that is cut out and put onto the face. Now the counterfeit versions of Peking will have very weird looking pieces of felt so you'll be able to tell. You can go ahead and look inside here and see the inside of this second gen tag. It says Peking. It's got the style number. It says the Beanie Babies collection over there. And we got a to and from and with love. There's the back of the tag. Yeah, Peking can go for quite a lot of money. He's kind of hard to find. There's not tons to say about Peking other than that he was retired with Chili and I think there was one other that he was retired with. So that is about it when it comes to Peking the Panda. He is super, super cute. So moving on from Peking, we have Pinchers. Now, I actually don't have pinchers. So if you want to call me out right now and say you don't have the whole second gen set, fair enough. Pinchers the Lobster is the one Beanie Baby I am missing, but I will get him. He's not very hard to find. He's out there somewhere, and eventually, when I do have him, I will complete this set. So moving on to the next one, we have Quacker and Quacker with no wings. Now... These two Beanie Babies are very weird. Basically, this is the first one that was produced. This is Quacker without wings. And I'm saying Quacker, no S at the end of that name. That's what this is called. Quacker without wings, okay? Later on, they changed the name to Quackers. Now, sometime early on in the second gen lifetime, Ty decided that Quacker needed wings. So this duck was given wings early on, which means there's two versions of this flippin' flappin' beanie baby. And if you don't know, this one right here, the wingless version, is not only the most expensive second gen beanie baby, he's probably one of the most expensive beanie babies ever. So if you do have a quacker or a quackers, because I'm about to drop some knowledge on you here, there are S versions of both of these in the second gen hang tag set. So you can get a Quackers without wings and a Quackers with wings. There's actually officially four of them. Am I going to spend over a thousand dollars on an S in a hang tag? No. You get these two with this collection and that's what I'm offering you. This guy, I actually did not buy, I traded him, which I was lucky because he's super expensive. And Quacker with wings, he's basically just your standard. But together, these two are some of the most unique, interesting Beanie Babies in the set. 
Quackers changed so much with the name, the design. I'm only collecting two of them. That's the official number in the set. Quacker with wings, Quacker without wings. If you wanna beat me and go and find the ones with the S's at the end and have all four, be my guest. I'm not spending the money on it. <laughs> One thing I do wanna mention about this wingless Quackers, if you are going to collect him, is that you need to make sure if you're gonna get him unauthenticated, you have to do your research about what makes them authentic. Almost every single wingless Quackers will have the hang tag placed underneath the head on the neck area. A lot of times you'll see these wingless quackers with the tag on the side of the neck or on the foot. That's not where the swing tag is supposed to go. You should ask a lot of questions if the person selling you a wingless quackers has the tag anywhere else other than underneath the neck. Also be sure to check out the tush tags. The tush tags are gonna tell you a lot about the authenticity of a Beanie Baby. One thing I look for in particular, sorry I can't hold this still, is the word handmade. Always make sure it has a very slight space between the word hand and made. It's not a full space, it's just a slight one. And when it comes to the word in China or Korea, it's spaced very far away from the word handmade. It will not be right next to it. Make sure you pay attention to those types of things whenever you're trying to self-authenticate a Beanie Baby. Now the next up is Seymour. I absolutely hate this Beanie Baby. It is so boring and dull to me. There's just nothing much going on to this guy. However, he is pretty cute. He's got that little adorable face, but he's just really small. He's really little, no color to him really. So I've never really enjoyed or thought this Beanie Baby was anything special. But what I love about this guy is that he still has the 499 written on the tag. So wherever this was sold, the person who sold it just went full 99. I'll write it with pen. I love things like that. Typically collectors do not like when their tags have writing on the inside or on the outside. I actually do. I love finding names on the inside of tags and seeing price tags like this because it's just a memory of the past and it tells a story of what that Beanie Baby went through. Which is pretty cool to me. Now this next Beanie Baby I'm about to show you is a behemoth. There are a couple in this set that are extremely hard to find and very expensive and this is number one. This right here is Slither. Now let me see if I can get... He's pretty tall and pretty big. Slither is one of the hardest second generation Beanie Babies to find. Now, mostly it's because he's a part of the first group of Beanie Babies that were ever retired, which includes Humphrey the Camel, Trap the Mouse, and Slither the Snake. Slither is a very weird situation. First of all, it's pretty big in terms of Beanie Babies. Number two, he's got a felt tongue, which fell off all of the time. It's very hard to find Slither with his original felt tongue. Most kids just pulled that felt tongue right out of his face and it comes right out. And third, there's absolutely no place to put the hang tag on Slither. There's no ear, there's no foot, there's nothing to put the hang tag on. So they just punched the hang tag right into his neck. And that means when you're playing with a snake as a kid, this hang tag is coming off. Most Slithers out there did not survive with their hang tag intact. This Beanie Baby is so elusive. A lot of people think, you know, the quacker without wings is the hardest to find. The spot without the spot is the hardest to find. I'll tell you right now, I paid more for this Beanie Baby than I did any other one. And he is basically the crown jewel of my entire collection. If you find or have a slither with its tag, second generation, you got money. This Beanie Baby is hard to find. It came in first, second, and third gen tags. And as I said, it was retired with Humphrey the Camel. Moving on. The next one up here is Speedy. 
and he is a turtle. I love this Beanie Baby. Like I said, I love the aquatic Beanie Babies. The color is super cool. It's the same exact fabric that was used for legs, that bright lime green, and if you can tell, this fabric is exactly the fabric that was used on Slither and Alley the Alligator. So they used this fabric a lot and repeated it on several different Beanie Babies. And before on Slither, by the way, if you couldn't tell, he was just a combination of this pattern with Quacker's fur. So a lot of these Beanie Babies, as I said, repeat and reuse the same fabrics and patterns. Pretty much all there is to say about Speedy, he's really small, he's a tiny little Beanie Baby. Really, really cute and vibrant. All right, the next one we're looking at is Splash the Whale. And I told you guys about this one earlier. This is basically a remodeled version of Flash the Dolphin. So let's bring Flash out. You can see how these are basically exactly the same Beanie Baby. Just a color change, gray and white, black and white, and this is Splash, and this is Flash. Later on, they'll get a poem in the fourth generation. The second generation Beanie Babies don't have poems. Later on, they'll get a poem that describes that they're a set, they're friends, yada yada, but they're awesome to have as a pair, and they are a part of the original nine. These next two are behemoths again. These are very hard to find, a lot like Slither. There's two of them. You have Spot with a Spot and Spot without his Spot. Now, this is the same sort of thing as Quackers with the wings, Quackers without the wings, the Inky with the mouth, without the mouth. You first had Spot, he was made without the Spot. That's how they had him in the first generation. They moved him over like that to the second generation. Then they created Spot and they gave him a Spot on his back. I don't know why they didn't do that originally. I don't know if it was an oversight or what happened. But what's interesting is that almost universally Everyone thinks that the spot without a spot is the rarest beanie baby out there. And he is very hard to find. He's very, very rare, and it's very true. But when it comes to the second gen set, they basically halted production on this guy around October, presumably. Which means that they only made a second gen version with a spot for like four months possibly five months, it's hard to tell. So either way you slice it, Spot is a pretty rare beanie baby when it comes to the second generation. He's just really, really hard to find. And by the way, this Spot is a UK version. So notice it says ultra rare. I don't know, I'm pretty sure the UK versions are the easier ones to find when it comes to the second generation, as I said. Okay, so here's the thing I wanted to talk about that not a lot of people mention. Take a look at Spot with his Spot. Just look at his pattern, right? Just look at his the way he's made. And look at Daisy. You guys see this? You guys see the exact similarities here? These two Beanie Babies have a lot in common. This is basically the same template. I mean, am I wrong? That looks exactly like they decided to take Daisy and just use her template on spot, just backwards. Anyways, wanted to point that out. So moving on to the next Beanie Baby, let's take a look before we ultimately get into the Teddies, which is going to be a long discussion. This is Squealer. Do not like that hang tag in there. It's very yellow and it makes me sad, but I don't want to break open this authenticated case. I don't know why, just I like the way he looks in here and I'm okay with him in here for now. But this is Squealer, he's a piggy. He's part of the original nine Beanie Babies and he is flipping, flapping cute, mostly because he uses this pink pastel color all over him and no other Beanie Baby really uses this color of fabric 
except for trap the mouse and he uses it very sparingly. So this is just a very cute beanie baby. Not much to say about this one that I have here other than it will take you a little bit of searching to find this dude. We've come to it. We've come to the teddy bears. There are 12 in this set and I'm just gonna introduce them to you as lots because I don't want to go over each individual one. So we'll put them all out here. We'll go over the new faces. We'll go over the old faces. I'll point out their colors and I have two region variants that I have to show you. So let's do that right now. Okay, so right here you are looking at a full set of the six new face teddies that were released after they discontinued the old face teddies. So I'm gonna name each color and show you them one by one. This one right here is the new face magenta. Now inside each of these, it just says Teddy. It never specifies the color in any of these. So that's the same name for each of these. This one again is magenta. This one is teal. This one is cranberry. A little bit darker than the magenta. This one's my favorite. Jade. Violet. And of course, the brown teddy. Now, brown teddy is an exception to all of these because these all were retired and discontinued at third generation, except for the brown new face who was produced until I believe the fourth or fifth generation. So he's much more common. All right, with that said, this is the whole set of the new faces. Now moving on, before we ever had the new face teddies, we had these beautiful old face teddies. Now these are some of my very favorite pieces in the entire set because they have that European teddy bear look to them. They really hit home in the vintage look of Thai plush toys. And they also command some of the most money when it comes to collecting Beanie Babies. Now I'll show you, these are also just labeled Teddy inside. They don't specify what the color is, so it's very similar to the new faces. Quickly, I'll go over the colors. They're the exact same, but I wanna show you the old faces as well. Right here we have magenta. Teal. Cranberry. Jade. Violet. And brown. Now, as I described in the New Face series, the brown color is the more common. However, when it comes to the Old Face teddy bears, the brown is the rarer one, and I'm not really sure why this is, but for some reason, the old face brown colored teddy 
is the rarest of the six. So here they all are. This is the six of the Old Face Teddies in the set. They're some of my favorites. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of region variations of these Old Face Teddies. All right, now before we get into these next two teddies that I'm about to show you, I wanna tell you a little bit of history really quickly. It'll take two seconds. When Beanie Babies were first being created, they were made in factories in Korea. The original nine Beanie Babies were made in Korea. And as the company got bigger and expanded, they opened more factories in China. So in the first two generations and even beyond, you'll have Beanie Babies babies that are made in both China and Korea. Now there are differences to the quality and the make of these Beanie Babies, but it is universally accepted that the Korean made Beanie Babies are much harder to find as they eventually discontinued production in Korea but they've always continued production in China, well into beyond the fifth and sixth generation. So what I'm about to show you right here is a Korean magenta and a Korean teal. So the ones in the center are made in China and the ones on the outside are made in Korea. I'm gonna show you the differences so that you can tell the difference because there is a big difference in price. The ones in the center are a couple hundred dollars less than the ones you see on the outside. So let's go ahead and take a look inside this Korean tag. You can tell on the left it says importeur. So this was intended for Germany. So. In the community, these are called German Koreans. They were made in Korea and were intended for Germany. You see it still says Teddy, but at the bottom, a sticker is covering up the made in China and it says handmade in Korea. Now you can confirm that this is a Korean Beanie Baby by looking at the tush tag because right here on the fourth line down, it will say handmade in Korea. And typically that says China. I'm gonna show you so that you can see the difference in the two. Here is the brown color. I'm gonna take a look inside the tag and you'll see the to and from are now present. And when you look at the tush tag, it says handmade in China. There is a big difference between these Korean teddy bears and their made in China counterparts. Now that sticker that says handmade in Korea, that is not always there. Sometimes it just says it. So there you go. Those are the difference between Korean and made in China Beanie Babies. All right, we are almost done here. Our next beanie is a rare one. It's a very, very hard to find second generation beanie. This is Trap. Now Trap is a mouse. You can see his smushed in face right there. And Trap retired with Slither and Humphrey. This is what makes Trap super rare. He's literally a bean bag. I mean, he is just a small little ball of beans. Now this particular trap is a UK trap as you can see by the hang tag and it is in museum quality. He is in immaculate condition. I've only seen two in my entire time searching for trap with a second generation hang tag. He's almost just as rare as Slither. The only thing that makes him not as hard to find is the hang tag does go in his ear and he has no felt pieces that can easily fall off. He's also relatively small. And as I mentioned before, he's got that pink on his tail and his feet and ears that can be found on Squealer only. The pig, one of the original nine that I showed you before. So if you have trap, 
in any form, whether it's third, first, second generation, Trap is extremely rare and hard to find. He will surely fetch you a pretty penny, even if you don't have the hang tag on him. That goes for Slither and Humphrey as well. If you find Slither, Humphrey, or Trap without their hang tag, you can still get some pretty good money for them. Next up is one of my favorites, and it's one of everyone's favorites. It's Valentino. Now, Valentino lasted for a long time in the Beanie Baby lifespan. I think he went up to like generation five or six. This is the hardest generation to find him in because Valentino was introduced in the second generation. Typically, you'll see a third gen tag or later, but if you have a Valentino with a second gen hang tag, that is the rarest version and most expensive version of Valentino. This right here, no matter what you read online or in magazines or anywhere, this is the most expensive and rare version of Valentino. The errors on Valentino that everyone talks about, oh, there's misspelling, it doesn't matter. There is no Valentino worth thousands of dollars. Listen to my words. The most expensive and rare Valentino looks like this. He has this hang tag, he has a black and white tush tag, and his nose is brown like every other Valentino. So much misinformation about Valentino just because he's a really popular beanie baby. Take my word for it, I've done a lot of research. This is the hardest, rarest way to find him. All right, just two more left. Here we have Webb. Webb is not my favorite beanie baby, but he is really, really cool. Webb retired fairly early. I'm almost certain he retired with Chili and peaking, but I may be wrong about that. He was one of the earlier retired beanies. There's not a whole awful lot to say about Webb. He's just a black colored beanie baby, really beautiful black color with a really deep red, the same red that you can find on Lucky, which is why I think they were going with this theme when it came to the insects. They wanted to have a red and black theme going on. Webb is a really cool Beanie Baby. There's just not a whole awful lot to say about him. Yeah. And last but not least, we're finally at the end of this Beanie Baby collection adventure. I appreciate it if you've made it this far. We have Zip. Zip is the exact same model as Nip. He is a cat and he was introduced in the second generation, which means they did not make a first generation of Zip. He is basically the same model as Nip, except for being brown, he is black. Still has the magenta whiskers and still has the white belly. I'll show you guys Nip just so you can get a comparison. So here is Nip and Nip You can see they're exactly the same. Just a color variation. Nip and Zip. Now Zip is much, much harder to find. Now they're both relatively difficult to find since this is the first time they ever came out. And both of these cats were changed drastically. Just as I explained how Nip was changed with a different face, different paws, even a different colored belly, they did the same exact thing with Zip. Now this is a UK zip, so this is potentially one of the earlier versions. And you can tell by the tag right here. If you find a zip or you have a zip that looks like this, even if it doesn't have a hang tag, it's worth some pretty good money. Zip is a very hard Beanie Baby to find. Luckily, I was able to get this Beanie Baby along with Trap two very hard Beanie Babies to find from a collector who was downsizing her collection. She didn't put any of it on eBay or anything. I was able to get a hold of her and make contact with her before she even marketed her collection to other people. So I took a huge portion of her collection. I didn't name every piece here, but a lot of them, including Trap, the mouse, and Zip here, the cat, I was able to get and for an amazing, amazing price. So that is all of the Beanie Babies 
in the second generation hang tag set, except for Pinchers the Lobster, which you didn't get to see here, but I did show you some Korean variations. I showed you some Canadian tush tags. I showed you some UK hang tags. I showed you so many different variations within this collection. Hopefully you guys have a better understanding of the second generation of Beanie Babies, collecting Beanie Babies overall. If you guys are getting interested in collecting Beanie Babies, this is a great guide to just watch, listen to before you get started and everything. It doesn't encompass the other generations, but hey, if you wanna collect other generations of Beanie Babies or get into collecting Beanie Babies, I encourage you guys to do your own research and look up all the information that you can. I will post Bic Dip on a Bus's YouTube channel below because he has a lot of amazing information about Beanie Babies that is worth taking a look at. If you guys have any questions about these Beanie Babies that I've shown you or anything that pertains to what I discussed, Go ahead and leave it down in the comments below and I will get back to you ASAP. Thank you for watching this video. I know it's not my regular shtick. This is something different. I wanted to share one of my collections with you guys. I have a lot of collections. Like I said, I collect skateboards, video games, a lot of stuff. So I just wanted to bring a collection your way, share it with you. Maybe you guys collect Beanie Babies. If you do, let me know down in the comments below. As always, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe. And I will see you guys next time with another episode of guess what yep you guessed it whatever i make peace